Welcome to the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. We discuss five questions in about 10 minutes because leaders know how to be concise. I am very pleased to welcome our guest today. This is Jennifer Shooter, and she is the Senior Vice President of Marketing for the State Fair of Texas. And thank you, Jennifer, so much for taking some time today. What would you, what would you like the people to know about the State Fair of Texas? Well, it's one of the largest fairs in the country. Um, we actually welcome about 2.5 million people each year over the course of 24 days. So it's one of the largest, also the longest running. So it's a it's an amazing 24 days. Um, and we had encompass everything. I mean, if there's a little bit of something for everyone at the fair, um, we have an auto show, we have the Midway, we have obviously we have big techs and that, which is an annual rite of passage for many Texans to come get their photo with him. Um, yeah, but it is really between the creative arts and the livestock and everything that we have to offer at the fair. It really is one of those really unique experiences. Um, and then we like to say that it's celebrating all things Texan. So it's a very, you know, Texan experience. Um, and it's also, we're really fortunate. We are, our grounds are in the middle of the largest collection of art deco buildings in the country. So you can come and see that amazing architecture that was built in 1936 as part of the Texas Centennial. Um, and enjoy the craziest fried food, you know, in the country as well. Do you get I mean, that's what everybody outside. really wants to do at the fair. Come on. Do you get folks from outside of Texas that come visit? We get folks from across the world. I mean, we, every year we have people who buy season passes and we always chuckle when it's like from Australia and New Zealand and England and uh, yeah, they're buying season passes because they're coming for more than one day. Um, and so we, we, we get people from across the world we get definitely get people from across the tech, from Texas um, in the country, but it's really you know it's very interesting. Uh, you know we also you know we, we also have our hometown crowd, right? We're in the we're in the heart of yeah you know, right outside of downtown Dallas, and so it's a little it's this really great mix of people from you know all sorts of backgrounds each year. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. So good luck putting all that together for yeah. this year's event. That's exciting. Yeah, we're looking forward to welcoming people back this year. I'll bet. I'll bet. I think a lot of people are. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and jump to our questions today. Our, quest, our first question, if you could share with us a success story of collaboration within a team. I mean, I, I have to say, trying to plan the 2020 State Fair of Texas is probably a really good example of that. You know, we, we went from a situation where we were very collaborative, very, we have a big whiteboard in our hallway. We, you know, we whiteboard a lot. We, you know, we, we spend a lot of time between our marketing and PR teams, um, really you know, playing with stuff and being able to, we have that freedom and we had to go to, we were, you know, sheltering in place and working from home and, and, you know, doing Zoom and, and doing all of that to collaborate. And, you know, the challenge for our, the marketing PR teams last year is that we had to, to keep moving forward, right? We, we didn't know there was a lot of unknowns. We knew, we knew a certain date where we, you know, probably would, you know, we, we, if we got past that, we wouldn't be able to have the fair, but our team had to sort of split their brains and talk and keep that hopeful piece of, you know, and our communication and, and all of that going with the fair, but also plan for cancellation mm -hmm. um, and had to pull a, you know, we, we went from, we had a, a, probably one of the best executed cancellation plans that I, I've ever seen. It was down to the minute um, we knew you know, when the board meeting was happening, when the decision was going to be made. And if that decision was made, we had a countdown clock that started right from there. We were all on, you know, a call. We were literally going, okay, do this, do that. I mean, and it was, you know, we laid it out and it, it went off as, as seamlessly as you possibly could for, you know, being able, you know, having to make that kind of unfortunate announcement. So, you know, being able to do that and not, not literally not been in the same room for three or four months, um, you know, and, and only being able to collaborate really made it um, crucial that all the tools that are now available and people are using, you know, sharing documents and editing documents together and doing all of that was really, really crucial for us to be able to do that and execute that at the highest level last year. Well, that is really impressive. Well done to you yeah. and your entire team there trying to coordinate all of that. I can't even imagine what kind of a gargantuan task that would be, but well done. Well yeah, done. Yeah, Hopefully we'll never have to do that again. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that's not the kind of scenario you it was, want to it, Yeah, about. it was the worst announcement. It's definitely the worst announcement you ever have to make. That was for sure. <laughs> not good. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed for this year. Yeah. Question number two, I hear from other leaders of teams that it can be a challenge to measure engagement. Tell us your thoughts. 
Yeah, I mean, it definitely is um, when you're looking at how do you keep your team engaged and how do you keep them moving forward? And I, you know, for me, I think the best indication whether somebody or one of my team members is engaged is when they're bringing new ideas to you. Mm. I think if you have, and or they're asking for training. I mean, those are sort of my two benchmarks. If they're waiting for me to give them, like, I need you to do this, I need you to do this, you know, and they're just checking boxes, I don't see the level of engagement. I love when, I love when they bring me a shower idea and, and say, hey, I'd really like to try this. Because I'm, you know, if, if you're if you're going out on a limb and saying, I thought about this, I really want to try this, what can we do? I think that's where you really have to support your team. And if you can show, like, I believe in you and yeah, let's try it. Let's add that to the email this time. Let's, yeah, maybe we should do that. I mean, having that freedom to throw some things against the wall and see if they'll stick and, and give people the freedom to to bring that to the table that really, to me, that is the best you know measure of engagement for my team to see, it, you know, making sure that they're really, they're passionate for what they're doing and they're they're moving their own careers forward as well. That's a really great comment. I never thought of the idea of that creativity and coming with new ideas as a measure of engagement. That is such a great insight. I really like that. Thanks. Well, question number three, based on your experience, Jennifer, what is one essential characteristic of a confident leader? I think it's the ability to uh, acknowledge that your team doesn't need you anymore. <laughs> I, I have always said as, as, you know, as I've brought, you know, kind of people up through their career and, and when they got to the point where they were having to delegate to others, is that the best day of being, you know, being in this position, the worst day of being in this position is when you realize your team doesn't need you. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when you have, when you have, you know, you know, onboarded somebody from college and, and watched them grow for, you know, several years and all of a sudden, they don't need you on calls anymore. They don't need anything like it. It's like, it's an opportunity for you to sort of reimagine what your role is in the company. But it, you know, it is also a very proud moment that you entered somebody to that position, but it's also really hard to, you know, it's definitely hard to let go and you have to make sure that you can step away from it um, so that they can succeed as well. So, I, you know, that's, that's always been my, you know, comment of best and worst day when you realize that, you know, one of your team doesn't need you anymore. That's a great perspective. You're right. It's very bittersweet, but uh, very empowering when you can do that for your employees mm -hmm. and your teammates. Great comment. Yeah. It's a great insight. Yeah. Well, question number four, if you would like to share an example or if you have someone that you'd like to recognize that has made a difference in your life. Yeah, you know, um, early on in my career, I got very involved in the DFW Interactive Marketing Association. Um, it was a, it actually started in 1999 and, and kind of was able to get involved in it early. And there were a lot of great group. There was just this amazing group of people that were there. And early on, there was a, a, a woman called Su named Susan Nick who kind of took me under her wing. Um, and, you know, I got to see how she helped plan events and, and how she mentored people. And, you know, I can't tell you how many times she's been a reference for me or a cheerleader for me and all of that. And unfortunately, we lost her last fall mm -hmm. due to COVID. And so, you know, I, I really look back on what she's meant to my career, even though it, it wasn't like I talked to her every day or, um, you know, it's not like a, that kind of relationship, but the the times that I needed her, she was really there. And I, I certainly hope that I can I can be there for someone like that for their, when the, during the duration of their career as well. Well, first of all, I'm sorry for your loss yeah. and losing a mentor like that, but what a great legacy that you want to now carry on from her to turn around and be that same kind of mentor for somebody else. So yeah. that is, that's, that's noble that you would want to do that. Well, our last question, tell us about your first job. I flipped burgers at a little family owned place in Allen, Texas called Tuffy's. It was named after the, the school mascot. Um, yeah, so it was you know, back then, I, you know, Allen was a tiny town. It is not so much anymore. You probably see it in the news, with this giant football stadium and things like that. It's one of the the big high schools in, in Texas now. And so, yeah, it was a little bitty town, about 3,000 people. And I, I flipped burgers, cleaned tables, and, um, you know, ran the cash register, depending on what day it was. Fantastic. Well, Jennifer- I guess what, that, that probably actually led me to my fair career. I had no <laughs> idea now that I just said that out loud. You had no idea you were planning- I had no idea that I was destined for fried food and fair food. <laughs> And now, and now I get to like, we, one of the fun things that we actually do at the fair, one of the, is I do a lot of the Facebook lives and on certain food days, we, you know, I have done 
make cotton candy, you know, make funnel cakes, all of those things on Facebook Live. So again, that, that's funny. I just I just realized that was a full circle moment. So, well, I'm glad we caught it on on uh, rec on the yeah, recording no there. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, Jennifer, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. How can people find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at Jen Shooter, um, S C H U D E R. Um, and yeah, so, and, and, or if you, you know, just email info at big, at big text.com, they can get any questions to me. They, they know how to, sometimes I'm even answering them myself. It depends on the day. So good enough. Well, thank you so much. This is Sean Richards with the team engagement podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights for more ideas, go to team engagement podcast.com. Again, that's teamengagementpodcast.com. And we encourage you to subscribe to the podcast as well as to the YouTube channel where you can watch the videos if you happen to be listening to this. Thank you again for joining us today and have a great day.